Hello, I want to talk about um, branch diagrams. Uh, most of you are probably pretty comfortable with using Punnett squares to do your dihybrid crosses and other crosses, but um, there are a number of reasons why um, I really want you to master the skill of branch diagrams. Um, some of the reasons are when you do your crosses using branch diagrams, I feel like you're more mindful of how probability rules and behavior of chromosomes are playing into your crosses rather than sort of rote filling in of boxes. Uh, besides the fact that when you get to two, three, and four genes, um, you know, Punnett diagrams are just unwieldy and they're also a lot more work. So what I want to do is I want to do a sample branch diagram for you and we're going to do one of Mendel's dihybrid crosses. You remember he worked with the traits and peas um, one locus, uh, Y, was responsible for pea seed color with the dominant allele giving us yellow peas and the recessive allele giving us uh, green peas. On another chromosome, a locus um, that we call R was responsible, the dominant allele, for round pea seed shapes, so we'll just call those round peas and the recessive allele responsible for wrinkled pea seeds. So um, I want you to imagine that we are asked to cross, uh, to do, do a cross um, using branch diagram, and we're asked for phenotypic ratios. So um, you may recall that uh, Mendel started with a couple of pure breeding lines. He started with some pure breeding yellow, uh, yellow round peas and cross those with some pure breeding um, green um, typo green wrinkle peas that's a little r um, and all of the f1 were as we would expect were yellow and round and this here is the dihybrid and what we're going to do is we're going to use a branch diagram to calculate the phenotypic ratio produced from a self of this dihybrid. And it is important to pay attention to if you're asked for phenotypes or genotypes. Um, in a later video, I'm going to show you how to use, uh, how to calculate the genotypic ratios using a branch diagram. But um, it's making extra work for yourself and it's inefficient to unnecessarily calculate genotypic ratios. So let me work through that branch diagram um, with you. So here's how uh, we would approach it. Um, I like to rewrite the cross up here. So uh, here's the cross. Here's the parents. And because the genes are unlinked, we can consider each of them separately. They're independent events. We can calculate the probability of each phenotype independently and simply multiply them. So I would think to myself, well, phenotypes, what I get from um, a self of two hets, and that would be, uh, I would expect three quarters of the progeny to be um, yellow and have the dominant phenotype, and I would expect one quarter of the progeny to have the recessive phenotype and be green. And here's the bit that uh, relates to the chromosomes. Uh, because the genes are thusly, this is what's going on during meiosis, they're on separate chromosomes. The fate of the big Y allele at the uh, color locus is independent of the fate of the alleles at the seed shape locus. Therefore, um, of the three quarters peas that are round, we would expect three quarters of those um, to, uh, oh, excuse me, of the three quarter piece that are yellow, we would ex expect three quarters of those to be round and one quarter of those to be wrinkled because those are independent events. And of the one quarter peas that are green, we would expect three quarters again to be round and one quarter to be wrinkled. And to calculate the final, uh, proportions of the four resulting phenotypes, um, we can go ahead and use the product rule and simply multiply across product rule independent events.
So you can see that the final proportions are as we would expect. We get that 9, 3, 3, 1 ratio. And we have figured it out with the branch diagram.